Ladies and gentlemen, for the people who are watching this stream right now, we'd like to welcome you to the AFC where we advocate for children first. And yes, we are talking about another child and actually a set of children, but this story is going to focus on one child in particular because it seems that this is the second child that has actually garnered support from the community in a way where they are uh, offering reward money for an arrest. I don't know if they're offering money for an arrest and a conviction, but they're definitely, offer, definitely offering money for um, some type of information that will lead to the arrest of at least the man that is responsible. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't a woman. So I'm throwing it out there like that for the man that is responsible. If I could even be as bold as to say it was probably a black man. Because I know it's some people out there that are truly convinced that it's not black men and black thugs and black gang members out committing all this violence. Is this you guys' first time hearing something like this? <laughs> I've actually had people email me and say it's the police that are in the streets in disguises that are out committing all of these murders. And I got to tell you guys, man, before I even read the story, I just got to tell y'all that has got to be the most creative excuse that I've heard for black people continuing to be their own worst enemy. And nobody wants to point the finger at us, especially us. And you know what's funny about it is when a black person steps up and says, yes, this thing is wrong, then people try to shut us down, right? Us as the AFC, and hopefully everybody understands what AFC means, advocating for children first. This happens all the time, and there is no reason for it to continue to happen. But the thing is, is until people start to look at themselves and say, we are the problem, nothing will change. So that's what we're here to do. We're going to continue to keep shining that bright light at these situations and exposing what the real issues are. In this story, a one-year-old boy was killed and his mother, his biological mother was wounded in a shooting Saturday afternoon in, where else, but Inglewood in the area of Chicago. How about that? Are you guys surprised? The 22-year-old mother and her child were driving home from a laundromat just after 2 p.m. on Halstead Street when another car pulled up alongside them near 60th Street, according to police. As the cars drove together, someone in the other vehicle fired seven to eight shots into the passenger side of the mother's car, according to police. The baby boy that you guys see on my screen right there, I'm gonna put some respect on his name. That little boy, his name is Sincere, Gaston. Let me let me see if I can back that photo up so you guys can see his face again. This little boy's face. Sincere middle initial A. Last name Gaston. What a handsome baby boy. What a beautiful baby boy. And he died for what? Somebody please let me know what this little boy died for. What was the cause? What was going on so wrong that this baby boy needed to die? It is beyond my understanding and it's not right. That little boy that y'all saw on my screen, as you can see from the bullet holes in that car, was struck one time in his chest as he sat in the rear seat of his mother's vehicle. And even the mom suffered a graze wound to her head, according to the police. The mother drove to the nearby hospital at St. Bernard, where her boy was pronounced dead. The boy would have turned two years old in just a few months. That baby boy right there. Cook County Medical Examiner's Office identified the boy as Sincere A. Gaston of South Chicago. An autopsy ruled his death as a homicide, saying he died of a gunshot wound to his chest. Here's my question for the people that are listening. How many of you guys in the chat that are listening right now, how many of you guys believe 
Either A, this was a random act of violence. Choice B, do you believe that the police had something to do with this shooting? Because believe it or not, this is something people are actually saying in public. <laughs> they are really speaking these words. These human beings are speaking these words. Option C, somebody was targeting the mother. Which one do you guys think it is? Let's go over our options again. A, random act of violence. B, it's the Popo's fault. Or option C, the mother was the target. What do you guys think? Guys can vote in the chat, but if you ask me, I totally believe that the mother was the intended target because it seems like each and every one of these murders are what we call retaliatory strikes. In Chicago, if y'all live out there in that area or you're, if you're familiar with that area, then you should know what I'm talking about, that everybody is retaliating for somebody did something to my people, so I'm gonna go do something to their people and because something happened to their people, they come back and do something to the other side. That's the way that this endless gang war works. It'll never end. It probably has something to do with whoever the mom was dealing with or probably something to do with some strong emotions because this is the type of thing that I call a crime of passion. This is absolutely not a random act of violence. That I can promise you guys. That I can promise you. And for the fact that people are so bold in Chicago and they continue to keep doing this type of thing because they know that the chances of them getting away with it is very, very high. Now, here's my question. Take the cough drop out my mouth. Here's my question, my next question. In Chicago, in the state of Illinois, they have some of the strongest gun laws on the books. My question is, do you need to make the gun laws even stronger for the people who are abiding by the law and getting their guns legally and their licenses legally? Should we, make, should we make the laws harder on the people who are doing the right damn thing, who are living according to the letter of the law? Is that what we should do? Because you know that's what they actually say. They say we should get rid of guns. But what that actually means is that you're going to take away guns from the people who are already following the law. So for the people who operate outside the confines of the law, the outlaws, the thugs, the gangsters, the criminals, the thugs, the hoodlums, whatever, the, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to try to mind my mouth tonight. Whatever you want to call them. Do you guys think that they're ever going to stop carrying their guns? <laughs> why would you want to de-arm the people who are following the freaking law? Why, why, why would you ever want to do that? Huh? Why would you ever want to convince a group of people who are doing the right thing to tell them, let us protect you? Well, you know, it's so funny that you say, well, let's let the government protect us, right? Let the government protect us while they can't even find all of the people who like, like they have people on videotape that are doing these shootings and they, and they are literally not able to make any arrest at all. And matter of fact, let's talk about this. That is the car that they believe is responsible for this shooting. So if you guys recognize that titted out dark car, which looks like a, well, uh, maybe they'll have a, a description here in a moment. But if you guys recognize that car in Chicago, then if you see something, say something, right? We want to make the laws harder for the people who are already following the laws. They call this type of thing gun violence. They, talk, they call this gun violence. But is that actually the correct term? Should we be calling this gun violence? 
If you ask me, I'd say no. Because the last time I checked, I'm not the brightest crayon in the box, right? You know, I'd probably be like a navy blue or brown. Because I'm definitely not the brightest one in the box. But last time I checked, my gun, which is actually sitting right over there. It's within arm's reach, by the way. But... My gun sitting over there is not going to go out and go kick somebody's ass. It's not going to go out and go lay a nigga down in the streets if I just leave it there. And matter of fact, even if I chambered around, took the safety off, and laid the gun on my table, I seriously doubt if that gun is going to get up and go do anything to anybody. Right? So why do we call it gun violence? You know why I believe we call it gun violence? Because words matter. And I believe that the masses of us hear that terminology and we don't think that this type of thing with these babies dying is important. Nobody thinks that this little boy who would have been two years old in a couple of months, nobody thought it was important. Nobody thought his life mattered. Nobody thought that black life mattered. How about that? Hashtag black lives matter. Do they really? Huh? I don't know. I don't know if black lives really matter. The fact that somebody knows who was after this little boy's mom, but nobody will say anything. Nobody will talk. And, what, and the funny part about this is the fact that people might say that they're scared to talk because they don't want the people to come and kill them. Well, the funny part about telling on people and being a snitch and being a target and people coming to kill you is the fact that if you don't say anything, they're probably going to come kill you anyway. Ain't that some shit? So it seems like we always talk about, you know, what we would have did back in the day. You know, we're we going we to go out on our feet and not on our knees, right? But the people in Chicago right now are literally going out on their knees, begging and hoping. Huh? Nobody's going to step up and say anything. You have just as high of a chance of telling on a criminal and getting shot or not telling on a criminal and still getting shot. How about that? 18 people killed and 47 people injured just over this past weekend. They don't want to blame the gang members. They don't want to blame the thugs. They don't want to blame the criminals and non-law abiding citizens. You know what they're going to do in Chicago? Blame the guns. Yes, it's the guns fault. Let's continue. This is happening far too often. According to CPD chief of chief of operations, Fred Waller said at a news conference outside of Inglewood district police station hours later, when is this going to stop? When are we going to say enough is enough? Waller said that judging by the number of bullet holes in the car, the shooting did not appear to be a random shooting. And again, I told you guys, I think the mom was a target and, and I don't want to speculate too hard on what the mom might have did to piss somebody off to make them want to kill her like that. But it don't seem like it takes a whole lot to piss people off in Chicago. And while you guys are looking at these other pictures, these are also people who are victims in the same area. Other kids. Other young people. So don't think that I got the wrong pictures up. These are the right pictures. Every single one of these pictures are. And for the Latin girl that y'all saw up there on the screen, let me see if I can get her picture up on here so y'all can see that as well. Let me see here. Almost forgot about this young lady, Amaria Jones, also dead in the same area within the past couple of weeks. That little boy dead as of uh, less than a week ago, right? And where's that young lady at? Right there in the middle. Also a victim. All of these people that y'all see, and that's not even close to all of them. Not even close. Just this weekend, there were 18 people, human beings dead. Now, again, I want you guys to remember that this was not a, act of, a random act of violence. Waller noted that he made a similar announcement only a week ago 
when a three-year-old boy who y'all just saw on my screen was riding in a car with his father in Austin and was shot and killed, which was, uh, his name was Makai, I think. I don't remember his last name. M-E-M-E-H-K-I, Makai. So y'all can look that story up. And he was riding in the car with his dad when somebody opened fire at the car as they were driving. But in that story, the dad was the intended target. The Another issue that's going on here is the fact that these people are trying to do, I guess, their parently duties. And while they're trying to also be parents and got all this fuck shit going on, the kids end up getting shot just because they're with their parents. He said, we'll catch the person that killed the three-year-old. We'll catch the person who killed this kid. That's not going to bring that kid back, and that's not going to satisfy that family. And I seriously doubt, knowing how high the rate is of them not being able to arrest these people and get convictions, I seriously doubt if that's going to happen. But let's move on. Let me see here. Last Saturday, Mary, or excuse me, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who was the mayor out there in Chicago. So I guess she must have took over for what? Rahm Emanuel, I guess. So Mayor Lori Lightfoot expressed outrage at the shooting and, or excuse me, as well as uh, another hours earlier Saturday when a 17-year-old was killed in Humble Park. The pain of losing a child never goes away. And today we lost more young people to gun violence that term, gun violence. You didn't, apparently these people are not dying at the hands of thugs and criminals and niggas. It's the guns that's doing it, apparently. I'm tired of burying our children. Lightfoot asked that if anyone has any information to call the police, even call anonymously. If you didn't know that you can call anonymously and give tips, you can. So you don't even have to reveal your identity to bring those responsible to justice. So what I'm going to do, because these videos are kind of long, I'm going to skip some of this other stuff. But last weekend, 12 minors were among the 104 people shot in the citywide nigga violence, the citywide thug violence, the citywide gang violence that left 15 people dead. In addition to the three-year-old, the deaths also included a 13-year-old girl struck by a stray bullet in Austin and two teenage boys gunned down in South Chicago. So let me go ahead and show you guys the news videos that were out there because there were quite a few of them and I'm glad they at least had a couple news videos. But let me give y'all the fair usage. Let's get it. If I can get it to show up. There we go. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And matter of fact, let me say this before I even show the news videos. For anybody who's saying that the police are dressing up in thug costumes and going out and they're participating in these shootings, I'm going to tell you, to everybody who is listening to the sound of my voice that believes that, you are stupid. You're an idiot. You're stupid. Okay? Now, now that I got that out my off my chest, let's go ahead and show the news videos. Hello everyone, another child has been shot and killed in Chicago. That baby boy, not yet two years old. His mother was also wounded. Tonight we are learning more about the latest victims of Chicago's gunfire. CBS 2's Jeremy Ross with what's being done to find the person responsible. Jeremy. Matter of fact, I need to take a pause real quick. Guys, please click that thumbs up. We should be averaging about five to 600 people here so people don't know we're live. So if y'all would, we're only at 178 thumbs up. We need to be at about 300 thumbs up, okay? Please, please click that thumbs up. Thank you to everybody that's here. Please click that thumbs up. And Jim, multiple groups this evening offering up rewards for information leading to the arrest and conviction of this shooter. The rewards right now totaling more than $30,000. Tonight, police are reviewing surveillance in area surveillance video from the area where the shooting occurred in an effort to try and find the person responsible. 
today. I just want to sit on the side of the curb like like the mom was at one point. I just want to sit on the side of the curb and, and shake my head and cry. Tremendous emotions and the tremendous uh, strife that they were going through. If you're not mad, if you're not outraged, if you're not heartbroken broken about this, then what will you be heartbroken about? And do you have a heart? Pastor Donovan Price was outside St. Bernard Hospital Saturday afternoon, as was a red four-door with bullet holes in the back and passenger side. This is the first time I held a mother and a father at the same time as they grieved over their child. A 20-month-old was killed. The baby was bleeding so bad. The child was hit once in the chest. It's all bad. There's a term, it's all bad. Well, this is it's all bad. Hours before this car carrying a 22-year-old mom and her 20-month-old child was towed away, police say a shooter saw the car on Halstead and 60th, pulled alongside the vehicle and started firing, grazing the mother's head and hitting her son in a car seat in the back. She was uh, returning from the laundromat. How many moms were in their cars going to the laundromat on a Saturday morning? That's a common thing. Police say about seven or eight shots were fired. The mother driving her car to the hospital for help, but it would be too late for her young son. It is unclear why the shooting happened, but early in the investigation, police say they don't believe it is a random act of gun violence. What they do believe. We'll catch the person who killed this kid, um, but that's not going to bring that kid back. I would like to, to see the, the silver lining. This is all bad. Amongst many other things, police are trying to identify the make and model of the car that the shooter was driving at the time of this crime. This is at least the fifth child under the age of 10 shot in the city of Chicago in the last week and a half. <coughs> in a week and a half. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Live outside police headquarters. First and foremost, I want to give my condolences to the uh, family of the 20-month-old uh, little boy. It seems like just uh, yesterday, it was last, actually last Saturday, I was in front of you all talking about a three-year-old that was killed in the Austin community. And now here in Inglewood, a 20-month-old was killed. Today, at approximately a little after two o'clock today, uh, the mother and that child were traveling southbound on Halstead at about 60th when another vehicle pulled alongside and the occupant of that vehicle fired into the, into the mother's vehicle, striking the child and grazing the mother in the head. The mother drove to St. Bernard Hospital where the child was pronounced. This is happening far too often. Too many times killed children are killed by senseless violence and not just only children grown-ups also when is this going to stop when is when are we going to say enough is enough i don't i have don't even have the words to see that family at saint bernard the, the tremendous you know emotion what's funny about this is the fact that they're offering 20 and i didn't mention this they're offering twenty five thousand dollars and, and speaking of of offering money, let me give a shout out. Mookie, who said, continue to fight, bro. I'm proud of you and appreciate your dedication. Thank you so much for that. They are offering $25,000, and that's not even including for the other death of the baby. Uh, Makai, I think they're offering like what? Like $15,000 for information leading to an arrest and conviction for his case? Offering all this money and nobody's stepping up to say anything. Isn't that something? and the tremendous uh, strife that they were going through. And we'll catch them. We'll, we'll, no doubt we'll catch the person who did it. We'll catch the person who killed that three-year-old. We'll catch the person. He said, no doubt. Yeah, we'll catch them. Yeah, we're, we're sure you will. We, we see how good your success rate is for catching people that shoot up and kill people every single weekend, right? And right about now, <laughs> y'all got 47 people injured and 18 killed. We'll see how many of those turn into convictions who killed this kid um but 
that's not going to bring that kid back. And that's not going to satisfy that family. Any questions? Do you know if this did or uh, Investigating this, looking at video, canvassing the scenes. So we'll find out. From what we have, when is this gonna stop? When is when is this gonna stop? When is when are we gonna say enough is enough? A 20-month-old boy shot and killed while riding his mother's car. He is the latest victim of gun violence in Chicago. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jackie Bang. And I'm Gaynor Hall in tonight for Tamon Bradley. Let's get right to WGN's Megan Dwyer for the very latest. Megan. Gainer and Jackie, another violent Saturday in Chicago. A mom and her son were actually on their way to the laundromat when there was a drive-by shooting around 2 o'clock today. Someone opened fire on their car. I just want to sit on the side of the curb and, and shake my head and cry. Pastor Donovan Price says he held the boy's parents today while they sobbed. This world is becoming the kind of world that you really almost don't want your child in. Around two this afternoon, the 22 year old mom was driving south on Halstead to the laundromat when a car pulled up alongside her at 63rd Parkway and opened fire. Her 20 month old son was behind her in his car seat. No doubt we'll catch the person who did it, um, but that's not going to bring that kid back. A bullet in his chest, the boy was pronounced dead at St. Bernard Hospital. His mother suffered a graze wound to her head. Police say seven to eight bullets hit the car. I don't think it was random because of the amount of uh, times it was fired upon. Just last weekend, a three-year-old boy was shot and killed in a car in South Austin. When is this going to stop? When, is, when are we going to say enough is enough? As a father, this hurts me to the core. Activists say, unfortunately, the toddlers won't be the last children to die violently this summer. The problem is not being addressed because the problem is too ugly for people to look in the face. They want leaders to treat violence on the south and west sides like the pandemic. This is another virus that we have to fight. With resources, treatment and systemic change. We are so focused on everything else but cleaning up the streets on the south and west sides. While folks are in Lincoln Park running and jogging, walking their dogs, retail, and it's heaven on earth. Folks in Inglewood can't even drive to the laundromat without their one-year-old being killed. Oh, did y'all hear that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I got I gotta say something. I gotta say something real quick. I, I got to say something. Did y'all just hear what this dude just said? He talking about folks on the other side of town are out jogging, walking their dogs, and we out here on in Inglewood, and we can't even go to the laundromat. Well, you know what's funny? Whenever you have communities full of black people, it should be a community where black people, because black lives matter so fucking much, you would think that maybe black lives would matter to black people. But the reality is the fact that black lives do not matter to black people. Can we say that again? Let's say it together, guys, on three. One, two, three, here we go. Black lives do not matter to black people. No change will ever happen until black lives start to matter to black people. Every day, every situation, every argument, every whatever it is, every relationship that you go through, every person that you deal with, how you talk to people, how you approach people, how you think, all of these things contribute to situational things. For every action, there is a reaction. So maybe in a situation like this, we don't always have to retaliate. We don't always have to get the last word. We don't always have to get somebody told. We ain't always gotta inbox somebody some bullshit on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We ain't always gotta send out death threats just because somebody don't like DJ Just J's YouTube videos, huh? It's funny how that works. 
But whenever you start start to put it into real situations where people can actually understand it on a day-to-day basis, they refuse. They don't care. All they want to do is they want to be run by their emotions every single day, right? Let's get it. Now this, I got to take a pause for. It's funny how in Chicago, how often this happens, how big of a target these kind of people are that live in these high crime ridden neighborhoods don't even have something as simple as life insurance. I want y'all to picture that for a moment. Maybe a lot of people say that if you live in certain areas, what are the chances that something's going to happen that are to their kid, right? But in Chicago, you literally know there is a high probability that you're going to be going to go do something really, really normal, do your day-to-day business, like go try to wash your, your dirty underwear, go clean your clothes, wash your towels at the laundromat, and somebody open fire and shoot your car eight times. There is a high chance that that's going to happen. Matter of fact, let me do this real quick. Do it like that. And again, what I say is something as simple as life insurance. You know they're gonna have GoFundMe accounts and you're counting on people caring and you're counting on plucking on the heartstrings of these benevolent white people and hoping that they donate to your nigga GoFundMes, right? You're hoping and praying that they donate a significant amount of money. If your story is big enough and sad enough, you're hoping that they donate to your GoFundMes. When you know that as you are born, you're going to die. So it should actually be, well, I don't think it should be in the law, like forcing you to get life insurance, but you should know as, as a parent, as an adult, as a responsible human being, you should have life insurance on yourself and your kids. If you are a parent and you do not have life insurance on your kids, please just get some life insurance. I'm not trying to kick people while they down. I know people are going through a hard time. All right. I know people are going through a hard time right now, but please get some life insurance on your kids. Let's keep going. Tonight, there is a $14,000 reward for anyone who has any evidence or information that might lead to an arrest. Mayor Lori Lightfoot today tweeting that she is tired of funerals. She is tired of burying our children. I'm live at home tonight. Megan Dwyer, WGN News. Okay, Megan, thank you. Okay, I want to thank you, the members of the press, for joining us today. Obviously, uh, the news over the last 24 to 48 hours has been very, uh, very disappointing. Uh, The one year old who was killed last night struck the hearts of many. Uh, Early Walker, as you all have followed him over the last few years, has been one of Cook County's uh, more prominent philanthropists. And uh, he felt compelled to formalize an organization two weeks ago, ironically, uh, that basically says, uh, I'm telling, don't shoot. And there's a website to that effect too, I'm telling, don't shoot.com. So this organization has come together today to not put up a thousand dollars or a five thousand dollar traditional reward but to talk about to which they have the money here today a twenty five thousand dollar reward for the uh arrest and approved charges by the state's attorney of a suspect so that's in combination an arrest along with the approved charges okay so they're not actually forcing a conviction for that reward money so it seems like If they get these people arrested and get proper charges on them, then you could win $25,000. Like why would not anybody take that money and just move your family out the hood? Why would you not do that? They always talk about, we don't, we don't got enough money to lead a hood. Well, it seems like, don't y'all think that $25,000 is enough money to lead a hood? I thought so. Shit. I don't even need a thousand dollars to lead a damn hood. (laughs) Matter of fact, when I left the hood, I left the hood with 
what like my my uh the the last paycheck that i had him and i left i'm just saying as he's assembled them and coalesced them here today along with our fascinating auto woman auto woman stephanie coleman to not only bring attention but to get the word out we want people to stop the uh no snitching code that's out we got one-year-olds ten-year-olds three-year-olds being uh killed now and it's time for the community to step up so to that end i'll have mr early walker come at this point you all can step in a little bit closer and pile on each other. Social distancing, okay. Early Walker, E A R L Y W A L K E R, philanthropist and business owner. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Uh, as Sean stated, um, we have decided to correlate a group of business individuals. Um, and we are calling ourselves, uh, or the name I should say is I'm Telling Don't Shoot. Um, and this is a group of business owners that are pretty much fed up as it relates to the gun violence within our communities. Um, I am a dad myself. Uh, literally a week so weeks ago, we just had a march uh, in regards to uh, the killings of our young boys and young sons. And something has to be done. Um, we are tired, fed up as it relates to the gun violence. Um, you know, innocent bystanders are being killed. Our kids are dying. At he has a group called I'm Telling Don't Shoot. I love that. I love how many of y'all love that? He said, I'm telling, don't shoot. How many of y'all love that for an initiative? He's putting his face out there. His group is standing behind him and they're putting in look, and I want y'all to notice that these are black faces. They know that this is a black problem. And these black faces are stepping up and putting money behind this thing. And they're standing on principle by saying, I'm telling, don't shoot. I love that. That's called taking an, an initiative right there. I love that. I love that. Let's keep going. A fast rate, and it's time for some type of a change. So we have a combined group of business owners, some are here present, uh, others are not, um, that have come together and we are putting our dollars behind this initiative. Uh, our least expensive or least amount of reward will be $25,000. Um, if we don't get the results we want, we will come back with another 25000 to add to that. Um, Y'all heard what the man said. Wow, I love that. Love that. He said if the first $25,000 do not do, we're going to put another 25000 on it. He wants these people caught. I love that. That's how you affect change right there. Again, I like to say this. I think it's absolutely insane the fact that they don't want to hold gang members, thugs, and criminals accountable for the actions that they are committing against their own kind. But it seems like a lot of people and a mass majority of people in, in America, but a lot of people, especially in Chicago, want to just blame all of this on the guns. They say it's gun violence and it's absolutely not. It is criminals. It is criminal violence. It is the criminals that are taking these weapons and a weapon could be anything. A weapon could be a car, a weapon could be a knife, a weapon could be your hands. It is the people that are doing the wrong and those people need to be held accountable. For the people who believe as, that it's secretly the police out there plotting on us, no, because I've seen videos of these situations in Chicago. I've seen surveillance store video I've seen live streams of young black men running up on people and shooting and shooting and shooting. If YouTube would allow us to be able to show that type of stuff on YouTube, I probably would show it. Just to get people to understand that this is not some wild conspiracy. And even if it was, why would you contribute to it at all if that was the case? It would seem that if you know what the problem is, then don't participate in the problem. Seems like that's a simple thing. If you live in Chicago, it is flat out irresponsible to not have life insurance. Everybody should have life insurance. From the moment that you hear my voice going forward, everybody get life insurance. If not for you, get it for your kids. Stop just opening up GoFundMes like the GoFundMes are gonna be the end all fix all. Last but not least, the thing that happened to this baby with this baby being shot in the chest, they were going for his mom. This was not an, a random act of violence. She was a target, just like the father on the last story. He was the target and got his son killed. 
I don't know why it's happening. I just know it needs to stop happening. And whatever it is that people got going on, they need to take a step back for a moment and realize that we are literally our own worst enemies and it has to stop, okay? This is your boy DJ Just J. It's not a me thing, it's a we thing. We're the AFC where we advocate for children first. From my heart to yours, I love you guys. And that's gonna conclude our live stream.